Today I'm going to talk about the uh, size of the opening on your spigot uh, and how it affects water flow from your rain barrel. Um, when you buy a rain barrel, it's pre-set up. Usually it'll come with a valve like this. The opening in this is tiny. Um, and that's okay on a pressurized water system, like if it's coming out of your house water. But when it's gravity fed, that small opening, that restriction, cuts the flow down quite a bit. Um, so this is a, a valve, a connection that I put together with parts from Home Depot. Um, and I'll show you each individual piece and talk about that. Uh, but I'm going to show you the flow that comes from this. This rain barrel is full. We just had some nice rain. And then I'll show you the uh, flow coming from a normal hose spigot uh, and show you the difference. So there's the dog. All right, hopefully this is in camera. I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to basically fill this. So that's full. And of course, uh, with this valve, you can open it more or less uh, depending upon how much flow you want. But that was a full flow from a full barrel. Um, if you're running a hose out to your yard, uh, that's going to slow the flow of the water too, uh, having to run through uh, the line of the hose. Um, so it may be less than that coming out the end of the hose. Uh, but that gives you an idea. So I'll put this on the plant here. Alright, uh, I'm going to move to another rain barrel that we have uh, in the front yard and then I'll show you the uh, difference. Alright, so here's a uh, rain barrel with a standard faucet on it, spigot. Um, and I'm going to show you the difference in how long it takes to fill this same container. Um, this rain barrel is full. I can reach the water in the top. The screen's not on right now. Um, so let's fill it and see how long it takes. So as you can see, maybe twice as long, something like that. Uh, it doesn't seem like that much time if you're filling this little container. But if you're trying to fill a five gallon bucket because you need to take it to your tree across the yard or whatever, that definitely adds up. Um, I have another a uh, metal ball valve on our large rain barrel, our water tank, and I'll show you how that flows uh, and explain why it's, you know, even though it's a metal one like this, it flows a little bit better or a lot better than this. So I'm going to dump this on a plant and then I'll show you that. Okay, so here we are at our large water tank. It holds about 550 gallons of water. It's not quite full now, um, but it's near the top. Uh, this is a ball valve that I ordered online, and the advantage of this is that specifically it was ordered because it has a full opening ball valve. Uh, some valves, especially the ones uh, you know that look like a hose spigot, are very restricted. Uh, this one is not. Um, so it has a fairly good water flow. I'm going to fill this container up, the same one I used on the other two tanks, and show you the time that it takes to fill. So it's pretty quick. At the end it kind of splashes when you close it, but um, it's a fairly, fairly large opening and a fairly quick flow. Alright, so a quick description of the parts and where to get them. Uh, all of these were bought at Home Depot. Um, most of them you'll find in the normal uh, plumbing department where all the PVC pipe is. Uh, these are all three quarter inch fittings and pipe. Um, the valve is a glue, uh, glue together fitting. This 90 degree angle uh, is threaded on this end with the fine threads that you'll find in the uh, plumbing department. Uh, this in though, this fitting is something slightly different. You'll find this in the uh, sprinkler department. Um, there's a section of maybe six or eight boxes with different fittings. This particular one is a three quarter inch MHT by three quarter inch slip 
PVC fitting. Um, the reason that you're getting this particular fitting from there is that the threads are more coarse and uh, I believe wider apart. And they're the type of fitting uh, that you need to attach uh, to a hose. Um, okay, so that's why you're looking for that part there. On this other end, the threads are much finer, not much finer, but finer, um, and they uh, are what will be screwed into the barrel. Um, they're not the correct threads for the hose. And you can see that, I believe, if it'll focus, on, on this particular uh, valve that, the, that came with the barrel. Um, these threads here are coarse and a bit further apart. These are a bit finer and closer. So basically what I'm doing is just duplicating uh, what was on there already. What you'll need also, besides these three fittings, is a bit of three quarter inch PVC and a way to cut it and primer and glue. Um, I have that in my yard just from doing things around the house, um, you know, or in my storage shed. So, you know, I'll just cut the lengths of PVC. I don't know if you can see that if I was holding it too low, but you'll cut the lengths of PVC, prime everything, glue it together, glue it together. Um, I chose to use a 90 degree bend at this end in order to keep the pipe from sticking, you know, however far that is, uh, out from the from the rain barrel. Um, this way I could keep it in tight, and I could also, you know, crank it a little more so it's straight down, or bring it at an angle, as I've done, uh, in order to get my hose running out this way, where I'm going to be primarily using it. Um, if you do go with an angled fitting like this, you have to be concerned about clearance. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but I glued it all together and then tightened it on. Uh, and what that did is I actually nicked the front of the barrel uh, on the bottom of the ball valve because it's a little bit wider than, than the rest of the, of the fitting. Um, so if that's a concern, maybe you'll want a connection that just runs straight out and you'll just have to accept it sticks out a little further. Or you could screw it in first glue everything together but then you know you're not going to be able to get it off uh, without cutting it apart down the road so all things to, to think about um, it worked out for me I don't really care about this um, and I have another one of this type of rain barrel which this is for um, another thing about these uh, valves that come with uh, that come with the rain barrels is that because this opening is so small that if you get a little bit of debris in there you know some some leaves and some grit and whatever um, it doesn't take very much to plug that up uh, so once that's plugged up uh, with some debris you have you know a half a rain barrel or whatever left and you're gonna have a difficult time getting it out um, getting the water out you know you can Put a stick in there and kind of try to clean it out or whatever uh, but that's a pain with this you know as long as it's not something huge that totally clogs the end uh, it's going to flow and usually it has such a, a good flow with a valve like this that you know if it's a little bit and it's clogging up you know you open it up and psh, it's going to wash it right out so i guess that's it um if you have any questions, you know, post them down below and I'll do my best to answer them as well as I can. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, happy gardening. Thanks. Hey, uh, one thing I forgot to add is that you'll want to uh, wrap the threads of your valve uh, with some plumber's tape or PTFE tape uh, before installing it just to make sure you don't have a leak. It's a bummer to you know, have your barrel all set up and the rain fills it up and then it's dripping out and, you know, you're trying to tighten it up without hurting anything. So a few wraps of that and you won't have to worry about it. All right. Thanks.